Hello, English learners, and welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. I'm Amira. All right, Amira is here today, and she is going to tell us about the wonderful lesson she has prepared this time. Well, thank you, Marco. Well, today we have a very interesting lesson prepared for you. It's about someone cutting in line. Cutting in line, okay. Yeah, it happens all the time and we all get very upset about it, but you know, it happens. Right, right. Well, I imagine that everyone is wondering what cutting in line is. Why don't we just listen to the dialogue one time? And then when we come back, Amira and I will gladly explain all the vocabulary in this dialogue. Let's listen. I can't believe it took us two hours to get here. The traffic in New York is unbelievable. Yeah, but just relax, honey. We're here and we're going on vacation. In a few hours, we'll be in Hawaii and you'll be on the golf course. Oh, no, look at that line. It must be a mile long. There's no way I'm waiting for another two hours. Honey, don't. Hey, man, the end of the line is over there. Yeah. No, seriously, I was here first, and you can't cut in line like this. Says who? I do. So sue me. All right, that's it. <clears throat> Whoa, I think there's punching. Yeah. yeah, I guess this guy was hes just a crazy, I don't know, impatient man, huh? Yes, yes, but we don't want to talk about this now. But for now, we will treat some of the vocabulary and very useful phrases in the dialogue. Great. So, Marco, do you want to start? Yes, let's take a look at our first word would be unbelievable. 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 Exactly. And just how you say it, it's something incredible, something amazing. Yeah, but I would like to point out that unbelievable was used here to describe the man's frustration. He's not happy about the traffic in New York. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, in the next part, the woman, she's trying to calm and relax her husband. And she says that they, um, they'll be in Hawaii in a few hours and um, you'll be on the golf course right so we'll be in hawaii and you'll be on the golf course yes we'll be in hawaii and you'll be on the golf course so this is a great way of talking about your physical location in the future right so for example amira tomorrow where will you be Don't worry, Marco. I'll be in the office tomorrow. Perfect, right? That's where I need you to be. Yes. Okay. So All right. Well, I have another interesting phrase here for you. Must be a mile long. A mile long. A mile long. A mile long. Now, that's basically not a mile. It's not a kilometer long, but it's another way of saying that this line is really, really long. Right, it's just an exaggeration. Um, now let's li take a look at there's no way. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. Perfect. Let's uh, listen to some other examples on how uh, we use there's no way in a different situation, and then we can come back and talk about it a little bit more. There's no way I can have those reports finished today. The stadium is so crowded that there's no way we'll find a seat. Do you think Michael's going to buy that house? There's no way he has enough money to buy it. Right, everyone, so there's no way is another way of saying it is impossible. Exactly. There's no way you should miss this podcast, right? Yes. Well, I have another phrase for you as well. Cut in line. Cut in line. Cut in line. Cut in line. Cut in line 
So again, we have some really good examples on how you could use this phrase in different situations. Let's listen to the examples and then we can come back and talk about it some more. Excuse me, I'm really late. Can I cut in line, please? I hate it when people cut in line at the bank. It's so rude. I think it's okay when a pregnant woman cuts in line. All right, everyone. Cut in line. Right. So from the examples, we can understand that it means when you are standing in line somewhere and somebody gets in front of you. Right. I have another phrase for you here. Sue me. Sue me. Sue me. Sue me. Okay, now, sue me is not a nice phrase. <laughs> If you hear that, you know you're in trouble. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of rude, I guess, to say, sue me. Right. Well, it actually means, like, taking someone to court and asking for money because someone has harmed you, in a way. I think that we should listen to the dialogue one more time and try to figure out why he used that phrase and if he's really going to take him to court. I can't believe it took us two hours to get here. The traffic in New York is unbelievable. Yeah, but just relax, honey. We're here and we're going on vacation. In a few hours, we'll be in Hawaii and you'll be on the golf course. Oh, no, look at that line. It must be a mile long. There's no way I'm waiting for another two hours. Honey, don't. Hey, man, the end of the line is over there. Yeah. No, seriously, I was here first and you can't cut in line like this. Says who? I do. So sue me. All right, that's it. <clears throat> All right, we're back. Now, this guy, when he says, sue me, he's just being rude. I mean, he's just being uh, kind of... Impolite. Impolite and telling him, I don't care. Right, right? exactly. Do, like, like, you can't do anything about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, today in the studio, we have a guest. Uh, her name is Sarah, and she's from England. Hi there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right. So um, we're going to be asking her a couple of questions and she'll be a frequent guest on our show. So you can expect to hear from her a lot. Well, she didn't know that. <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah, it's a surprise. But... She knows now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sarah, uh, our topic today is about jumping the queue. Okay, Amira, wait, what is this uh, jump the queue? It's the same as cut in line, but in British English. Ah, okay. Yes, queuing. Uh, it's very important in England. We're very proud of uh, our queues. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. So, so what would be the reaction of people if they, like, you know, cut in line? I think we do take it very seriously. I'm laughing now, but it's, it's, quite, it's quite serious. So you don't jump the queue. If people, you know, uh, jump in front of you, it's, uh, you get a little tuts and sort of, oh, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't be doing that. And, and we make it very obvious. And in the So you say it out loud? We, we would, uh, you know, perhaps say something. And we have systems, you know, in London on the, uh, on the metro. Um, on, on the underground, you have to stand on the, the escalators on the right and, and queue, and you can't jump in front. You have to walk on the left and queue on the right. And it's wow. all very serious. There's, there's rules and regulations. <laughs> so. Is there like a queue handbook that well, you have to read in high school and kind of take a test on? Perhaps there should be. There should be, yeah. Wow. What about New York, Marco? Well, no, definitely, I guess this um, dialogue is similar to a reality of New York. If somebody gets in front of you or cuts the line, somebody's going to say something and probably end up in a fight if uh -oh. the guy is rude. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, uh, Sarah, why don't you tell us, is there a line or a queue for almost everything in England? It seems like we do just like to form a queue. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know. Can um, you think of like some other examples of where you would Normally, you wouldn't queue, but you do. 
Oh, gosh. Um, things like in the supermarket, when you're trying to find some vegetables or something, I'd never push, I'd never sort of reach round or anything. I'd sort oh, of really? wait until that person had finished picking up their stuff and then and then go in. So ah. it just, just try and... So if like five people want to buy oranges at the supermarket, then you have a little mini queue of five people (laughs) waiting. There's no, there's no sort of just shoving through to the front. You just don't do that. (laughs) So you don't stick your hand out and grab like a tomato. If you do, again, you you would make sure that that person knows. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm you know just um, in a hurry or whatever. But yeah, it's just letting someone go before you is a courtesy. I think it's quite important to us. All right. Right. Great well, stuff. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, we'll have you back very soon. So, all right, we're out of time, but we'll be back tomorrow with another lesson. And be sure to visit our website. Don't forget that EnglishBot.com has many, many resources and uh, also a community of users and teachers that can uh, help you answer questions and uh, interact with you. Yes, and you should definitely leave your suggestions. But for now, I wish you all well. And bye. bye. The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Unbelievable. Relax. Be a mile long. Cut in line. There's no way. Traffic jam. A few hours from now. Form a queue. Jump the queue. Stand in line. Line up. Let's try that faster. Form a queue. Stand in line. Be a mile long. Line up. Unbelievable. Traffic jam. Relax. Cut in line. There's no way. A few hours from now. Jump the queue. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Unbelievable. 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 Relax. 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 Cut in line. Cut in line. Cut in line. everyone and welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. And I'm Erica. How are you, Erica? Marco, I'm doing really well. How about you? I'm doing great. I'm really excited because today we're talking about travel. That's right. We're going to give you some real English to talk about travel. Exactly. English that you would use in everyday life, that you hear in movies and TV shows. English people actually use. Exactly. So why don't you tell us a little bit about this lesson for today? Okay, so today we are going to listen at as a husband and wife get ready to go on a trip. All right, that sounds a little bit complicated. Uh Uh-huh. Well, (laughs) let's look at our two preview words. Vocabulary preview. Okay, so the first word that we have is road trip. Road trip. 
Road trip. Road trip. Okay, so road trips are really fun and interesting, right? Road trips are great. You get to get in a car with your family and drive on a vacation. Yeah, those are really fun and they're really popular in North America. Really popular. I've been on a million road trips. <laughs> All right, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But now let's take a look at our second word and it's the cars packed. The cars packed. The car is packed. The car is packed. So when your car is packed, it means that everything you need is inside the car. All right, so your bags, your food, everything that you need for your trip. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, so those were our two preview words, and now we are ready to listen to the dialogue for the first time. Okay, this dialogue will be at normal speed. It will be fast, but don't worry if you don't understand everything. After 10 minutes, we promise you will understand everything in this lesson. So, are we all ready to go? Yep, I think so. The car's packed, we have munchies and music, and the map's in the car. Did you get the camera? Got it. Did you fill up the tank? Yep, it's all set. You're sure we're not forgetting anything? I'm sure. We've got all our bases covered. Well, let's get going then. I love road trips. Mmm, do you think we can make a pit stop? But we've only been on the road for ten minutes. I know, but I forgot to go to the bathroom before we left. Well, she forgot to go to the bathroom. Yeah, I hate it when this happens. This happens to me on almost every road trip. <laughs> okay, great. So now it's time for our language takeaway. We have three words for our language takeaway today. Language takeaway. And the first word is munchies. 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 So munchies are? Snacks. Snacks. Food. Food. Chips. Chips. Cookies. Chocolate bars. All that good stuff. I love munchies. <laughs> and they're really good when you're taking a road trip. Indeed. Okay, so let's take a look at our second language takeaway word for today. And it is fill up the tank. Fill up the tank. Fill up the tank. Fill up the tank. So this is to... Put gas in your car. Put gas in the gas tank. In the gas tank, exactly. All right, our last language takeaway today is... Pit stop. Pit stop. Pit stop. Make a pit stop. It's a quick stop for you to get some gas, food, go to the bathroom. Yeah, a pit stop, a quick stop. Great, so now it's time for putting it together. Putting it together. Okay, so we have two great phrases for you today. Let's take a look at the first one. We've got all our bases covered. We've got all our bases covered. We've got all our bases covered. This is a really great phrase and it's really useful, right? Yeah, let's listen to a couple of examples. Example one. We've got all our bases covered in case the hurricane hits. Example two. Okay, I have my keys, wallet, and passport. Looks like I have all my bases covered. Okay, it's clear now, but you can use this in a lot of different situations, right? You can use this in many situations. If I'm at work, I could say, All right, we've got a really good marketing plan. We've got all our bases covered. Exactly. You have everything ready. You're all prepared. Perfect. All right. Now let's take a look at our second phrase, and it's let's get going. Let's get going. Let's get going. Let's get going. All right. So when you say let's get going, it just means... Let's start. Let's start. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. But the interesting thing about this phrase is you can change it a little bit, and it means something different. Uh-huh. Let's listen to a couple of examples. Example one. I have the chicken, so let's get cooking. <laughs> Example two. This house is really scary. Let's get out of here. 
Example three. I have another meeting in twenty minutes, so let's get down to business. So let's get down to business, Marco. Let's get down to business. Let's listen to the dialogue one more time, but this time it'll be a little bit slower, and you'll understand much better. So, are we all ready to go? Yep, I think so. The car's packed. We have munchies and music, and the map's in the car. Did you get the camera? Got it. Did you fill up the tank? Yep, it's all set. You're sure we're not forgetting anything? I'm sure. We've got all our bases covered. Well, let's get going then. I love road trips. Um. Do you think we can make a pit stop? But we've only been on the road for ten minutes. I know, but I forgot to go to the bathroom before we left. So that was a little more clear this time, wasn't it? Yeah, you can definitely understand better about what we've been talking about. Yep. Okay, so now it's time to look at Fluency Builder. Erica, why don't you explain what Fluency Builder is? In Fluency Builder, we give you some great, useful phrases to help you express your ideas clearly. Okay, great. So let's look at Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. All right. So we all know how to ask the question: Are we ready to go? That's right. You can say, "Can we go now?" Or you can say, "Are we ready to go?" Exactly. But there's another way that we can say this, and we heard it in our dialogue. So let's listen. So are we all ready to go? So are we all ready to go? Wow, that sounds really good. It sounds a lot more fluent. Fluent, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So another simple phrase that we all know how to say is, "It is ready." It is prepared. It is ready. Right. So these examples are fine. They're yeah. right.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're correct English. No problem. But there's another way to say this that we heard in the dialogue, and it sounds a lot more fluent. Yep, it's all set. Yep, it's all set. It's all set. That sounds much better. Yes, and we're all set to listen to this dialogue for a third time, and this time it's going to be at its normal speed. So, are we all ready to go? Yep, I think so. The car's packed. We have munchies and music, and the map's in the car. Did you get the camera? Got it. Did you fill up the tank? Yep, it's all set. You're sure we're not forgetting anything? I'm sure. We've got all our bases covered. Well, let's get going then. I love road trips. Hmm. Do you think we can make a pit stop? But we've only been on the road for ten minutes. I know, but I forgot to go to the bathroom before we left. So, Erica, you said you've been on a million road trips. What was that all about? Where have you been? Okay, well, maybe not a million road trips, <laughs> but many road trips. Every summer, I used to go on a road trip with my family, and we would drive many, many hours, probably eight hours in one day, up to northern. Canada. Oh wow, nice. Yeah, and then we would go camping, and we would sleep outside, and we would have a campfire at night. It was great. Ah, family road trip. Yeah, but maybe eight hours in a car is <laughs> a little too long. Well, yeah. Well, I've been on a different kind of road trip with some、uh, buddies of mine, some friends. We would drive to Las Vegas. Really? Yeah. So that's really fun. A bunch of crazy guys in a car. Going to Las Vegas and then just having fun and talking about everything. So that's a much different experience than a family road trip. Maybe that sounds a little bit more fun. <laughs> yeah, eight hours in a car is not really that boring with all your friends. All right, folks, we're out of time for today, but be sure to visit our website at EnglishPod.com and leave all your questions and comments. Okay, well, thanks for listening, and until next time, goodbye. Bye. The English Pod Audio Review.
Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Prepared, ready to leave. All ready to go. Full, everything is inside. Packed. Snacks, food. Munchies. Put gas in the car. Fill up the tank. Ready. All set. Have everything ready. Got all the bases covered. Start. Leave. Depart. Get going. Long car trip. Road trip. Quick stop for food or gas. Pit stop. The luggage area of a car. Trunk. Person in a car, not the driver. Passenger. Highway. Freeway. A car you rent, a car you pay to borrow. Rental car. Fee paid for using the highway. Highway toll. Let's try that faster. Long car trip. Road trip. A car you rent, a car you pay to borrow. Rental car. Have everything ready. Got all the bases covered. Person in a car, not the driver. Passenger. Snacks, food. Munchies. Quick stop for food or gas. Pit stop. Highway. Freeway. Start. Leave. Depart. Get going. Put gas in the car. Fill up the tank. Prepared. Ready to leave. All ready to go. Ready. All set. Full. Everything is inside. Packed. Fee paid for using the highway. Highway toll. The luggage area of a car. Trunk. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Road trip. I don't like road trips. Road trip. Let's take a road trip to Las Vegas. Road trip. Do you want to take a road trip? Packed. My suitcase is packed, so we're ready to go. Packed. Did you pack the car? Packed. We can't leave yet. I didn't pack the car. Munchies. I'm starving. Do you have any munchies? Munchies. Let's get some munchies for the trip. Munchies. We don't have any munchies. Can we go to the store? Fill up the tank. Did you remember to fill up the tank? Fill up the tank.
I can't fill up the tank. I only have five dollars. Fill up the tank. I filled up my tank on the way home from work. Pit stop. We need some gas. Can we make a pit stop? Pit stop. We're making a pit stop in an hour. We'll eat lunch then. Pit stop. I'm sorry I was late. I made a pit stop on the way home. We've got all our bases covered in case the hurricane hits. So I've got my keys, wallet, and passport. Looks like I have all my bases covered. This sounds like a great plan. You've got all the bases covered. Get going. We have a long trip today, so let's get going. Get going. What time do you want to get going in the morning? Get going. We didn't get going until lunchtime. All set. I've got everything ready, so I'm all set for the trip. All set. Are you all set to go to the airport? All set. We're all set. This is going to be a great trip. All ready to go. It's time to get in the car. We're all ready to go. All ready to go. It's time to leave. Are you all ready to go? All ready to go. Come on, I'm all ready to go to the airport. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco. My name is Catherine, and today we have a very special lesson for everyone. It's it's a new level for us. Right, it's an advanced media lesson, and we are going to be listening to an apology. Well, it's an apology letter, but we're going to actually have someone talk it out. Right. So, what's happening here is someone is reading a letter they've written, and they're trying to apologize for something. And we don't really know what this something is, but I want everyone to really listen here to the words that are being used and to the ways in which we can say sorry. Because, as they say,、uh, there are a thousand ways to say I'm sorry. Dear Mary, I come here today in this way. Because I need to apologize to you, I failed you. Although I did not lie to you in words, I lied to you with faces that did not belong to me. I never meant to ruin the friendship that meant the world to me. You mean the world to me, and now I come to you asking for forgiveness. If in your heart you find you can't, then I will understand and learn from this experience. You came into my life at a time when I needed you the most. We talked about so many things that I started to realize my heart and my soul could actually feel something other than hurt. You placed comfort where there was fear, confidence when there was doubt, a shoulder where tears could fall, and completeness where there was emptiness. I wanted to hold on to this so badly that I did whatever it took for you to notice. What I didn't realize was that I could lose my entire being, all of who I was, and all of that I had placed in you. I wanted to be the one who would be there when you needed to talk. I wanted to be the comfort for your soul when the world was too much to handle. I wanted to be strong for you when everything else seemed impossible. I wanted to love you in only the way you deserve to be loved, 
never realizing that I was destroying myself and you. Somehow, I needed you to be a part of my life. The only problem was that I was willing to jeopardize everything to get that done. All the things that I told you about how I felt and how you make me feel were true. Nothing else mattered to me except hearing the laughter in your voice when you were happy. You made my days easy to get through and my nights peaceful. You helped me look forward to another day. Even though distance separated us, just being was enough. I'm sorry for hurting you. And if I had to do it all over again, I would have been 100% with you. Forgive me, please. All right, we're back. So the guy seemed to be pretty sad. Yeah, this is a very intense, uh, well, it's not a dialogue. It's a monologue. One person is reading it. So it's a very intense monologue. Very romantic. Yeah, romantic, but also an air of melancholy. Yeah, that's true. It's He's kind of like apologizing and at the same time expressing love and uh, all these feelings. So it was very interesting, but why don't we uh, take a look at a couple of phrases. Now, in advanced media, we're not going to analyze the entire dialogue or, um, as we do in the other levels, actually pick out uh, items for language takeaway or fluency builder. So in advanced media, we're only going to pick out a couple of words and phrases and just talk about it and talk about the topic in general. Exactly. And so one of the first phrases that we decided to talk about here is this phrase, I failed you, because this is really the theme of the letter. Right. So if you fail someone, it means that you let that person down. Okay. So you fail someone. I failed you. Or you can say, he failed me. So when I really needed that person the most, that person didn't come through or let me down or failed me. All right, so let's give an example maybe. Um, I needed my brother to pick me up because I don't have a car. And my brother was supposed to pick me up at 4 o'clock and he forgot. He didn't come. So he, he really failed me. All right, he mm. failed you. Yeah, I was disappointed. <laughs> well, this isn't, that's not as serious as what happened here in this, in this letter, I think, right? I think so, but we can talk about what did happen. <laughs> I think I have a theory. I'm, I know you have a theory, so I, we can talk about that in a minute. But before that, we have some other phrases about forgiveness and disappointment. Right. Well, he also said, you mean the world to me. And now I come to you asking for forgiveness. Okay. So we've got a positive and a negative. So the positive here is you mean the world to me. You mean the world to me. Mm -hmm. This means... You are so important to me. You're one of the most important people in my life. You're, you're, worth, as, you're worth the entire world, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, it's a very poetic way of saying you're very important. Yeah. And then he says, and now I come asking for your forgiveness. Okay, so this implies that he did something wrong. I come asking for forgiveness. So in English, we ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You can also beg for forgiveness. Right. So please, please forgive, forgive me. me. But this you is, can't you can't demand forgiveness. Though. I demand you forgive. No, that doesn't quite work. <laughs> All right. What else do we have? We've got the world again here. He says he the guy who's reading. He says, you know, I wanted to be the comfort for your soul. So this is very again poetic. Mm -hmm. When the world was too much to handle. Mm, wow. Too much to handle is a really important English phrase, right. and I'm sure you've heard it before, but we could talk about it a little bit here. Right. So he says when. Everything else was too much to handle. So everything was so difficult or it was overwhelming. Right. So you could say even in the office, man, all this work I have to do, it's too much to handle. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So too much to handle. You could also say a child is too much to handle. I think they said this about my brother. <laughs> he was very difficult growing he's up. too hard. He's too, he's too difficult to handle. All right. Uh, well, what about in the part where he says, you place comfort where there was fear, mm. confidence where there was doubt. So this structure is interesting because you placed something where there used to be something else. So you're placing something, you're changing something for something else. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an exchange. So you could say you placed comfort where there was fear. You placed happiness, happiness where there was sadness. Where there was sadness. So it's always like kind of opposites, right? Exactly. Okay. Instead Light of, where there was dark. Right, exactly. So that's an interesting format of, of saying something. You did something where there used to be something else. All right. And uh, what about this word to jeopardize? Oh, this is a good one. I always think of the TV game show Jeopardy, uh -huh. um, but that's a noun. This here is a verb to jeopardize. And that means to put something in danger or to risk losing something. Okay. So to jeopardize your health if you're doing something dangerous. So smoking jeopardizes one's health. Mm -hmm. You're putting your health at risk. 
or I don't want to jeopardize my savings by investing everything I have in stocks. That means I would prefer to do something safer. Mm. So you don't you don't like to jeopardize your your well being. I like to play it safe, as we say. <laughs> All right, very good. And uh, last but not least, this almost the last phrase when he says, "Even though distance separated us, just being was enough." What does he mean when he says just being was enough? All right, this is very romantic, intensely <laughs> romantic. He says, "Even though um, we were far apart." Mm-hmm. Just being, so just existing, just breathing mm-hmm. was enough. So just knowing that she's in the world was enough for him to feel happy. So that's what he me- he means with just being was enough. Right. So being is existing. Mm-hmm. It's it's being alive. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very good. I think we should listen to this uh, apology letter one more time, and we'll be back. Dear Mary. I come here today in this way because I need to apologize to you. I failed you. Although I did not lie to you in words, I lied to you with faces that did not belong to me. I never meant to ruin the friendship that meant the world to me. You mean the world to me, and now I come to you asking for forgiveness. If in your heart you find you can't, then I will understand and learn from this experience. You came into my life at a time when I needed you the most. We talked about so many things that I started to realize my heart and my soul could actually feel something other than hurt. You placed comfort where there was fear, confidence when there was doubt, a shoulder where tears could fall, and completeness where there was emptiness. I wanted to hold on to this so badly that I did whatever it took for you to notice. What I didn't realize was that I could lose my entire being, all of who I was, and all of that I had placed in you. I wanted to be the one who would be there when you needed to talk. I wanted to be the comfort for your soul when the world was too much to handle. I wanted to be strong for you when everything else seemed impossible. I wanted to love you in only the way you deserve to be loved, never realizing that I was destroying myself and you. Somehow, I needed you to be a part of my life. The only problem was that I was willing to jeopardize everything to get that done. All the things that I told you about how I felt and how you make me feel were true. Nothing else mattered to me except hearing the laughter in your voice when you were happy. You made my days easy to get through and my nights peaceful. You helped me look forward to another day. Even though distance separated us, just being was enough. I'm sorry for hurting you, and if I had to do it all over again, I would have been 100% with you. Forgive me, please. All right, so what do you think he did that he's apologizing in this way? Because I don't think there were a couple, right? Because he mentions friendship、uh, a couple of times. Yes, with a but. You don't write a letter like this to someone who you want to stay friends with. You write a letter to this to someone who you have some kind of romantic or intense feeling for, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. So to me, this seems like a letter that was written to someone who was a great friend, and、uh, he's afraid of losing that because he cares even more for her. Right. But yeah, I guess. But、uh, do you think he's he's confessing his love in a certain way here? I think in some ways he's confessing a love. You can love your friends; that's okay.、Mm-hmm. Um, but more than that, he's just he's apologizing for something that he thinks has completely destroyed their friendship.、Mm-hmm. And that is where I'm very confused because I have no idea what he did. <laughs> well, maybe、um, he did something. That let her down. Maybe he became jealous of her new boyfriend, or something like that. Yeah, or maybe it's something catty, like he was supposed to do something with her and ended up doing something with other people and、mm-hmm. left her out, or embarrassed her in front of people. It's Now, hard to say. Have you ever written an apology letter? Yeah, I yeah. have. I've written a few apology letters. Yeah. I have a very strong sense of guilt. <laughs> <laughs> I was raised Catholic. It happens. <laughs> so,、uh, an apology letter is it? Do you usually plan out what you want to say, or you just like you just splurge your feelings onto the paper? Well, you know me. My personality <laughs> is very planned and organized, and so normally I have points. So I say,、um, if this is the problem, there's three parts. I have an answer for each part, and the very end, I have the heartfelt apology. Oh wow! It's like an essay. I guess it's a li- yeah, it's a little bit more organized. If I were to write something like this, I would just like start writing and whatever comes out. So it would probably make less sense than your letter. 
Well, I just try to stay on focused standpoint and address the matter at hand because otherwise then you get into other stuff and you can make people more angry. Right. But it is really important to write an apology letter. Now, some of the words and phrases and the vocabulary used here uh, can be used in circumstances that are not only romantic, right? You can be Absolutely. used in a, in a professional uh, way as well, right? That's true. In, in a professional sense, you want to be careful not to get too personal. Right. So in a professional sense, it's good to say that, you know, you're sorry for any mix-ups or for misunderstandings, but in the future, you will try to make things better right. uh, or improve. But in friendships and in families and in romantic relationships, apology letters are very, very important because... I'm a big believer in mending bridges. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who we say in English, you know, to burn a bridge, that means to destroy a relationship and, mm -hmm. and never go back. Mm -hmm. um, but I like to mend bridges to make sure that people who I was friends with don't, you know, if we have a fight, don't just hate me forever. Right. That even if there's a disagreement that they understand my perspective or that I understand theirs. Yeah, that's true. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. What about apology emails? Do you agree with those? I think that they are a necessity of the 21st century. <laughs> I mean, I live far away from most of my friends and family, and so it's right. important for me to be able to communicate in any way. But, um, and sometimes, I mean, I'm very shy with some people, so sometimes it's hard for me to talk on the phone because I get stuck and then I don't, I can't think of what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. And so if, if a letter helps in that way to, to get you past your, um, your fear or your anxiety, then by all means, an email is just, just as much. I actually a received way. a letter a handwritten letter through an email. How did that happen? So the person... They scanned it. They scanned the letter. Oh, wow. So it was still like... It still had a very intimate and personal sense. But obviously, since the mail takes so long and everything, they just scanned it and then they sent it to my email. Well, that's nice. So that, I think that's a good idea. Maybe you, you could try that one. I'll try that one. <laughs> I don't right. agree with the, the one-line email. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Yeah, yeah. That, that's not good. As my parents always used to say when I was growing up and I'd get in fights with my little brother, the only apologies that we accept are the ones that are from the heart. Right. So I used to have to apologize again and again and again <laughs> until you actually I meant actually it. meant it. And right. so I think that this is a very true kind of idea that that well maybe not in business and work where you have to be cordial right. with friends and real relationships with people right. who you care about obviously real apologies are very important of course so this is an interesting topic and we recommend that you if you have any other questions or doubts or maybe you want some other explanation for this letter you can come to englishpod.com leave it in the comments section and we'll be there so until next time bye